All right, let's continue to talk hockey. And right now we have Solomon Tom Benny, a biokineticist, and he is from the Biokineticist Sports Science Institute in South Africa, and he joins us here on Sports Scene. Solomon Tom Benny, thank you so much for joining us here on Sports Scene. We appreciate your time. Let's dig straight into it. South Africa has won eight of the last Cup of Nations titles in a row. What are they doing so right in hockey, and why can't they translate that into football? Uh, thank you very much, and uh, good evening to your viewers at home. Um, well, what I think is happening within South Africa is that uh, in terms of the schooling system, especially when we talk about quantile four and five schools, which are your elite schools in the country, fee-paying schools, there's a proper hockey structure of which there are proper th turfs in many of the schools, and there is actually a pool from which the national team can select players from, but also Within the university, there's a structured and well-functioning university hockey league whereby the national team can get players from universities where there are proper infrastructure to select players. So I think that is partly what is causing the success within the hockey team. But then when you look at the, 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 the football, the football, I think, is, is overwhelmed by administrative issues. There might be money in the sport. But the problem is until you fix the administration part and the structures within, there will always be problems within football which will ultimately affect the national team. Well, yes, indeed, Solomon, definitely the different sporting codes in South Africa can certainly learn from what hockey has uh, succeeded in. Well, not one, but two teams have qualified for the World Cup. What can we realistically expect their performance to be, Solomon? Okay, basically, um, within, with the World Cup being in the next few months, which is July, um, I don't think we're going to get a different result than we got from the Olympics. Um, a year is too short for you to make any significant changes within the structures of the team and the way the team plays. So I don't even think they're going to do better than they did during the World Cup. But um, be as a South African, I will just support because it's our home team. But in terms of the team performance, I expect more or less the same performance and ranking as they did in the Tokyo Olympics. All right, uh, Solomon, one more question, if you would indulge me. With all that you've said, how do you project the future of South African hockey and what do you see it to be? Okay, one thing I can say about South African hockey the structure, the development structure is quite good. But like I said, South Africa is actually um, a nation which is quite divided. You have the previously marginalized, and then you have those that were previously advantaged. And you have that, that elite group of the advantaged group going to these elite schools, whether black or white. But as long as you can go to these elite schools, you will have proper structures within the field of hockey because there is access and availability of facilities for you to excel in hockey. But then when you go to your township schools and your rural areas, there is no hockey. It doesn't exist. Most of the kids there don't even know um, the sport. So when you talk about the future, we need to look at it from the elite side. The future looks bright because the structures are there. The scientific support is there. We've got well-functioning, high-performance centers around the universities within the country. The universities are doing well in terms of the league and the uh, opportunities for hockey players. But the problem is those learners that can't even make it to the universities, they will not have an opportunity to excel in a sport like hockey. The clubs are doing fairly okay, but not as well as the university level. So what I think the future is, the future is pretty bright, but on a world circuit, in an African continent, it's looking very bright, but on a world circuit, it's still a bit shaky because we need to increase the pool of athletes and talent from which to select the talented hockey players from. Until we get to the level where we, everybody has an equal playing field in the sport of hockey, we will always have this challenge of excelling at the world stage. But also, in terms of the, the world, uh, in terms of the, 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 the hockey in itself, there is insufficient support from government. Most of the tournaments, the hockey team, the national hockey team, 
has to raise funds to go internationally and compete. And that is quite a big problem in terms of the hockey. Players have to pay to play. They don't make any money from the sport. Because of that, the future is, is a bit shaky. So government needs to do more in terms of supporting hockey. Sponsors need to come forward and give money to the sport because we need that. Spectators, we need, they need to be efforts of which to promote the sport within the South African context so that there's more viewers um, who watch hockey as well. Because the more spectators we have, the more sponsors there'll be. All right. Well, there you have it. Salam Tumbeni, thank you so much for your time. And, well, from what you said, the government and sponsors, we're looking at them to contribute more to hockey. Thank you so much. But we're not done just yet. We have to bring in Mustafa Alam into this conversation. Mustafa Alam, he is a sports analyst at the Egyptian Gazette, and he's joining us uh, live from Cairo. Mustafa Alam, thank you for joining us in this conversation. Let me start by asking you, about Kenya and Egypt. They seem to be nipping and tucking at the heels of South Africa. What do they need to do to challenge this powerhouse called South Africa in hockey? Yeah, first, hello, uh, first. So secondly, so the point here is, uh, yeah. Well, okay, continue. So the point is that the the game in Egypt and some, yeah, and some uh, and some, the game in Egypt and some African countries uh, are not that popular. If you compare them with other games like football, handball, so at first we need to propagand this game to make it more popular. You know, like in Egypt, uh, Egypt hosted the, the, the game or the African Cup of Nations for hockey for twice in the last few years. But if you ask anyone in the street, so do you have any idea that Egypt hosted uh, the African Cup of Nations for hockey? He will say, what hockey? That's the point. So here we point to have to uh, introduce people to the game first. Uh, that's number one. Number two, it's about the sponsorship for po players and the clubs as well. You know, Lo, because uh, I had an interview before with a national player who plays in a club in Egypt, and he said to me, Mustafa, imagine that Egypt had have has only Egypt has only around 25 fields for hockey around the nation, so which is very small number and around 20 clubs or 25 clubs playing that game. So here we have to motivate the young people in Egypt and other countries, especially in Africa, uh, motivate them to play uh, a new game. Like, it's not a new game, to, uh, a play, uh, to play a game like hockey. All right, Mus That's it. And for sure, building, uh, building more fields and renovating the infrastructure for such a game, for this game, is a must. All right, Mustafa, thank you so much for your insights. I have one more question for you. Uh, Solomon Tombeni touched upon the role of, of government in the sport of hockey. So I'll pose the same question to you. What more do you think the government can do to improve hockey in your country? Yeah, so you mean here uh, the, the role of the government? For sure, number one, it's funding. Uh, funding here means, you know, like uh, building more fields, uh, just, uh, you know, like providing a sponsorship for the players because uh, when you ask a, a kid or a teenager, why don't you think of playing a game like a hockey? He says, no, I need some, some games like football, basket, uh, basketball, tennis ball, maybe because of the, of the gaining money and fame, but that's it here. So there is no motivation even from the government. So the government should launch some, uh, some initiatives, some programs to motivate uh, kids and uh, young generation for such a game for the hockey. You know, like what happened in Ghana, the, the Ghanaian government has launched uh, a, vol a volunteering coach program for, ho for hockey. Um, a stand or a move which I see that it's a very brilliant, it's very good to motivate the new generation, the younger generations for this game. So, and as I've said to you, building the infrastructures, uh, here also motivating the clubs 
themselves, collapsed themselves to, to include the, the game on their list of the sports. All right, Mustafa Alim, thank you so much for sharing your perspective. Thank you very much indeed.